Hi everyone, this is Luke Yang there from Reality X Lite and I know it's been a month since I uploaded the last video but um, here's the last part so let's jump straight to the point open up the new blender scene and go to the compositing tab uh, click on this use node uh, we don't need this render layer node so I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna get rid of it and I'm gonna add a new movie clip by hitting shift A input and then movie clip Locate your footage and hit the open clip. If you press Ctrl Shift and left mouse button, we can uh, preview the footage in the background. And if you don't see this, just go to the preference, add on, and search for node and then enable this node wrangler add on. To key this green screen, we need a keyer in the matte category. So um, we are gonna add the keying node. Uh, by default, it will key out the white part, uh, I mean the white color. So uh, we have to change this to green. Select the key color and select this picker and go to uh, go pick some darkest green color. And if you light your green screen correctly, then one drop of this picker will almost erase all the green channel. Now I'll set up the length for our footage, which is 73 for this shot. Let's remove all the unwanted stuff by selecting this plus button and then VFX and then masking. Load our green screen footage here and I'm gonna remove these windows for now because we're not gonna uh, use this for now. We can start to add a mask by holding control and left click if you keep holding your left click and then slide your mouse then we can uh, smooth the curve so just try to include everything outside the green screen in this mask and after you're done with adding the mask then press alt c to close the loop do the same thing for the left one but make sure you uh, deselect everything before you add a new one and if you want to add a handle later, select on these dots, then you can hit V or right click and then set handle type and then free. Now you can adjust the handle to whatever you want. I'm adding another one down the floor and then I'm going to rename it as garbage. We're going to need two more masks. Uh, one is to get the right shoe back uh, to the screen because we are just cutting it off. So just click on this icon to add a new mask and do the same thing as before. So just select everything with A and then press Alt S and then drag your mouse. Um, this will give feather to our mask so that we don't see a uh, sharp cutoff. Now we have to animate the mask. So just hit this record button, but this doesn't record the active position. So hit G, don't move your mouse and then left click. So I'm going to animate this mask till frame 14. You can use R for rotation and G to grab and move the mask. Now let's jump back to the compositing and remove the unwanted stuff by adding um, this mask to the garbage socket. So hit shift A, input and then mask. Select the garbage and connect to the garbage mat. We can see a little bit of black here. So I'm going to manually type uh, the value from a previous project. Uh, simply duplicate this mask and choose the shoe mask and connect to the core. And we can see this really weird looking space here. So I'm just gonna uh, go back to the masking tab and make some adjustment there. Add one more mask for the shadow because we completely removed the, the, the shadow from the previous key. So it's exactly the same thing. So I'm not gonna repeat this process. Once we've finished the mask, then go back to the compositing tab and add a new keying node. So this time select um, the area which is a bit lighter uh, green than the previous one so that we are not cutting off the shadow anymore. Sometimes we have to go to the uh, matte color and manually adjust the key color to get more precise uh, matte. And once we're happy with the result, then we're going to add a shadow mask uh, to cut off anything outside this shadow. And if I connect this to the garbage mat, it does exactly the opposite of what we want. So let's invert the color. And I know there's a 
there's a bit of unwanted stuff so just be more uh, precise in your masking I'm not gonna do it here so to combine these two key we need alpha over note which we can get from the color category so just connect these two together and if it looks a bit brighter than what it's uh, supposed to be and uh, tick on this alpha convert now when I scroll timeline we can see that uh, the mask keeps staying in the frame so we're gonna remove this using the math node simply drag the math node between this mask and core mat change the operation from add to multiply if I set this value to 1 uh, this will output the exact same value since anything multiplied 1 remains the same I'm gonna use this mask till frame 14 and then fade away after that so I'm gonna key this value by hitting I while hovering the cursor in this area and then go one step forward and then type 0 and then key it again so let me explain what happened behind the scene <clears throat> If I preview this multiply node, then we can see it's completely black. And if I scroll uh, back a little bit, then we can see the mask. So think about this mask value as 0 and 1. Uh, the white part is 1 and the black area is 0. When I multiply this 1 value with 1, it remains the same. But when I multiply this 1 with 0, then it becomes 0, which means black. And this way we don't see the mask anymore. I hope it's clear. Now let's export this key footage. Go to the printer icon and choose your destination. Uh, you can set a file format as a PNG or TIFF file. Just make sure you connect this alpha over output to the compositing input and then render this out. Now we have to add this key footage inside Blender. So to do this, we're going to use plane and use that plane to play back the key sequence. Open your scene from part two and select this bone hit shift s and then choose this cursor to select the options uh, this will set the cursor exactly to our virtual character now to import a key out sequence we're going to use an image as plane uh, locate your key footage folder and then select all by hitting a and then before you import image as plane make sure you check this animate um, image sequence and emit options and then import image as plane scale the plane roughly to match the knee height because i'm using female character here as the reference and if i try to match the shoe size of our character then we're gonna like our character gonna be too small if you feel the emit value is a bit too low then we can crank it up by now uh, going to this uh, material setup and increase the um, increase the strength to two this will brighten up the footage a bit all I'm doing right here is just uh, repositioning the key out footage to where I want it to be. Now when I change the render engine from EV to Cycles, then we can um, see the accurate reflections of our character on the floor. And if you don't uh, see this reflection, you simply have to go to the floor materials and then tweak the uh, roughness a bit. I'm gonna quickly change the resolution to 1920 by 824 uh, real quick so that we don't see this weird cutoff anymore. If we take a closer look at the footage, uh, then we can see that the CG part is way, way sharper than the real world footage. This is why I don't wanna render this uh, plane in the final render. Uh, we're gonna use the original key out footage in compositing instead. And this is super simple to do in Nuke uh, if you have followed my previous course. But in Blender, um, it's a bit tricky to get this done and a bit manual as well, but it can be done. So I'll show that to you in just a bit. Select this plane and go to the object properties. Go down to the visibility and uncheck this camera. So this will make the plane invisible in the final render, but leaves the reflection instead, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to quickly adjust the lighting a bit more because I think it's too dark uh, for now and this material as well. I'm not going to detail for this one because we already covered this one in the step before. And then before I render this out, I'll enable denoising data so that we can use the Intel denoiser in the compositing tab. 
Now render this out without the keyout footage and here we can see the reflections and not the footage which is great. Go to compositing windows and enable these options. And you will see the render layer and compositing node. Uh, it's not here because I did this before and deleted it uh, when I re-record this tutorial. But for you it should be there by default. Go to filter and take the denoise node. Connect between the image and viewer node. This will erase all the noise and then connect normal to normal and for some reason this noisy image output always become cleaner like 90% of the time so I'm going to use this instead and then connect albedo to albedo. Now decide the output folder uh, for this render and hit render animation button. After we're done with the render, let's change the render engine from cycles to EV and render the volumetric. There will be two passes for the volumetric render and one for the front and the other will be the back uh, of our character. This is because if we render just a single pass and compose everything at once, then the depth of the volume will interfere with our character and then uh, create some weird results. So I'll show you what I mean in the compositing. Now enable the volume, um, select the camera and set a clip end to be the distance of our character from our camera. Uh, which is 1.5 meter for the scene and it will not be the same for your scene and as I said before uh, this is to take the volumetric um, the volumetric fork which is in front of the character and then tick this icon so that it will still affect the scene but doesn't uh, visible in the final render set the output folder and render this sequence after we're done with the render, we're gonna do the same for the back as well. So set a clip start to 1.5 and extend the clip back to all the way to the point where we can't see any clip anymore. And don't forget to click on this mask icon and decide for the render location and hit render. There's one more thing or we have to set up before we can composite everything together in the compositing windows. Uh, which is to set up the tracking data since there's no way we can take the camera data to compositing but there's one node that can uh, transfer camera tracking markers so we're going to use um, utilize that now select the plane and then shift s cursor selected and i'm going to add a sphere just below this ankle uh, so we're going to track this sphere and then use the tracking data to translate our key out footage Make sure you hide everything and render just this shape. I'll give you one disclaimer here. Uh, we can move the sphere X and Z axis, but if we move along the Y, um, which is toward or away from the camera, uh, our key out footage will never sync with anything that we've previously rendered. So just keep that in mind. Now I know this is super, super confusing right now, but trust me, everything will be clear once we do the compositing. Now let's open new Blender and then compose everything here. Go straight to the compositing tab and remove this render layer node. Add image instead and locate your beauty render folder. Trim the timeline to 73 and add another image and locate the keyout footage. We're gonna use alpha over to merge these two images together. Now if I scroll the timeline, we can clearly see that our character slide on the floor. Uh, this is due to the mismatching of the camera movement. Uh, we can manually use transform node to match the exact motion of the camera or simply track our sphere and use that data to translate our character. Let me show you how this is gonna work. But first we have to track our sphere in motion tracking tab. To do that, select this plus icon, uh, go to VFX and then motion tracking. Open the sphere that you've just rendered. Hold Ctrl plus left mouse button to add a new marker. Scale it a bit bigger so that we can cover the entire circle. Hit Ctrl and T to track the sphere forward. Go to this track tab and then rename it as tracking data. Now let me show you what's gonna happen if I use that tracking data and apply it to some other uh, random texture. So if I use this book and scale this down a bit and then scroll the time, we can clearly see it's float in the air. But if I use this track position node and connect X and Y value to the translate node, 
uh, we can't see anything because it translates this book off the screen. So I'm going to use another translate node to move that back to where we want it to be. And if I put the book just on top of this boot reflection, then it stick to the position just like it's there in the scene. This is why we need to set up the tracking data. I hope this makes it clear. Now, then instead of this book, I'm going to use our character. Now I'm going to import back the volumetric fork and place it behind our character. To do that, we need to merge it with the beauty render using alpha over node. We can use this fact slider to decide the amount of fog that we wanted uh, for the background. I'm going to use around like 0.7 uh, for this one. Let's add the front volumetric at the end of this node. So add a new image node, uh, locate the front folder and select everything. Merge everything with alpha over node and use the fact to adjust the opacity. Now all we have to do is color correct the whole footage to the kind of taste uh, you want for your final render. I'm going to add the first color balance node here in, uh, in the character output because they do not match each other. Uh, right now the highlight color is a bit too cold so we have to slide it toward the orange. And then add one more color balance um, node to give the overall grade. I like this film to be a bit more green and orange. After we are done with the color grading, you can decide the output folder and the file format and then render. You can save the file as PNG as well. You don't have to go to these settings for now. This is just to preview what's going to happen in the final render. Do this for all the shot. And once you're done with all of your shot, now we can come to the video editing tab and add all your shots together here. Just add all your shot here using Shift A. You can even add your background music um, using this sound button and then render the final output here. So that's it for this video and I know it's a bit um, more intense than all the previous one. So feel free to ask me anything related to this video or if you face any issue with it. So just ask me in the comments below. You can also send me direct message on my Instagram. I can give you a mentorship in, the, in your visual effects career so that you don't waste like a lot of time going the wrong direction. And then please consider subscribing to this channel if you're interested in visual effects or computer graphics in general. I'll always share you the latest tips and tricks so that you always stay up to date and become more efficient in your CG career. So that's it for this video. See you in the next part. Bye-bye.